And located in eastern Africa, just south of Nubia, modern-day Sudan, the Great Ethiopian Empire would be established by 980 BC. The first inception of the empire was in the form of the Kingdom of Damat, which the Ethiopians established in 980 BC and constructed its capital, which was called Yeha, in the north of Ethiopia. The location of Yeha also provided easy access to the Red Sea and further east access to South Arabia. In ancient times, Ethiopia was also called Abyssinia and the written language of the Ethiopians was called Ge'ez. After the decline of the Kingdom of Damat, the Ethiopians established the Kingdom of Aksum in the year 100 AD. But prior to all of this, the region of Ethiopia was already a flourishing African nation and is mentioned in the holy book of the Christians named the Bible. Indeed, one of the oldest human skeletons in the world, which dates back to 160,000 BC, was discovered in the area called Hurtu, which is located in northern eastern Ethiopia. Now, the Kibranagast is a historical record of some of the early history and royal lineage of Ethiopia. The Kibranagast is also known as the Glory of the Kings. The earliest compositions of the Kibranagast date back to 500 AD and it was compiled by the Coptic priests of Ethiopia. The Ethiopian king and Zana introduced Christianity into Ethiopia by 335 AD. However, long before this, some of the Ethiopians had been following the religion of Judaism. The Kibranagast is divided into 117 chapters. The Kibranagast follows the tradition of the books of the Abrahamic religions, namely the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. Within the Kibranagast, the early chapters provide details on the creation of the first human being and prophet called Adam by God, and the subsequent fall of Satan, and also the story of Cain and Abel in a similar fashion to the Torah, Bible, and Quran. The Kibranagast goes on in chapters 7 and 8 to detail the stories of the prophet Noah and the flood. Chapters 13 through 17 are focused on the prophets Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was a gold-covered wooden chest, which contained two stone tablets with the Ten Commandments inscribed upon them. The Ten Commandments were a set of ten spiritual and religious laws provided by God to the prophet Moses while he resided in Egypt in northeastern Africa. The Ark of the Covenant is also known as the Ark of God and the Ark of the Testimony. The Kibranagast in chapters 21 through 40 details the stories of Prophet King Solomon of Israel and the Queen of Sheba. Now, the Queen of Sheba was an African queen who ruled the region of Ethiopia and territory of southern Arabia, modern-day Yemen. The Queen of Sheba ruled Ethiopia in around 1000 BC, and she is also referenced in the Bible and the Quran. The Queen of Sheba is also known as Makeda. The Kibranagast goes on in chapter 21 to begin to describe the Queen of Sheba, referring to her in specific verses as the Queen of the South. Indeed, the Bible also refers to the Queen of Sheba in the same way in the New Testament in Luke chapter 11, verse 31. The Kibranagast provides the following details on the Queen of Sheba in chapter 21. 
And as this queen of the south was very beautiful in face, and her stature was superb, and her understanding and intelligence, which God had given her, were of such high character, that she went to Jerusalem to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And this was done by the command of God, and it was his good pleasure. And, moreover, she was exceedingly rich, for God had given her glory and riches, and gold and silver, and splendid apparel, and camels, and slaves, and trading men, or merchants. And they carried on her business, and trafficked for her by sea and by land, and in India, and in Aswan, Syene. Within the Kibran Argus, the book goes on to explain that one of the Queen of Sheba's merchants had conducted some trade with King Solomon and informed the Queen of his great wisdom. Chapter 23 states the following, And each morning Tamron related to the Queen about all the wisdom of Solomon, how he administered judgment and did what was just, and how he ordered his table, and how he made his feasts, and how he taught wisdom. The Queen of Sheba then decided to meet with King Solomon, and then began to develop a friendship with him, and to discuss God, and this went on for months. The Kibranagus provides the following details of her initial arrival in chapter 25. And she arrived in Jerusalem, and brought to the king very many precious gifts, which he desired to possess greatly. And he paid her great honor, and rejoiced, and he gave her a habitation in the royal palace near him. And every day he arrayed her in eleven garments which bewitched the eyes. And he visited her, and was gratified, and she visited him, and was gratified. And she saw his wisdom, and his just judgments, and his splendor. The Kibran Argus records that the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon of Israel eventually fell in love and had a child together. The Kibran Argus goes on to say the following, And the pains of childbirth laid hold upon her, and she brought forth a man-child, and she gave it to the nurse with great pride and delight. And the child grew, and she called his name ben Alechem. And the youth ben Alechem was handsome, and his whole body and his members and the bearing of his shoulders resembled those of King Solomon, his father. The son of the Queen of Sheba is referred to as ben Alechem in the Kibranagast, which translates into English as son of the wise. He is also called David. He was also known in Ethiopia as Menelik I. The Kibranagas states that the son of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon went on to eventually become the king of Ethiopia, and it was from him that the kings of Ethiopia descended. The Kibranagas goes on to say the following, Makeda, the queen of Ethiopia, gave the kingdom to her son, and she said unto him, Take the kingdom, I have given it unto thee. I have made king him whom God hath made king, and I have chosen him whom God hath chosen as the keeper of his pavilion. The Kibranagas goes on to describe the early battles of the king of Ethiopia, and how he implemented the belief in God across the empire and other historical events of the time. The Kibranagast is held in high regard by Ethiopian Christians and Rastafarians to the present day.